All righty, guys, All Facts Media. My name is Aaron Robinson, joined by our twin brother, Andrew Robinson. And today we have uh, the producer of uh, the documentary In the Water, uh, John Beckham, or one of many producers. So thanks for, for joining us today, John. Thanks, fellas. No problem, man. So, you know, we're going to get right into it, man. Obviously, you know, this documentary was extremely monumental for, for the DMV basketball area, you know, to, to just be able to have, you know, the, the, the culture documented, you know, for, for the nationwide public. Um, so, you know, for, for you, you know, being one of the guys that put this documentary together, you know, what was your thought process? What was the reasoning behind, you know, wanting to create, you know, documentaries uh, such as this? Uh, well, you know, I really thought that this area had been overlooked maybe passed over a little bit when, when there's in the discussion of all these great areas that produce basketball talent and thought it was about time for, uh, for Prince George's County to get its due. So uh, obviously, you know, the documentary aired on uh, May 15th and, you know, since then there's been a lot of debate that has been sparked because uh, of the documentary. So a lot of people have been asking like, you know, why focus on just PG County? Obviously the DMV basketball scene, there's a lot of great talent. You know, there's obviously a lot of people have come through D.C., you know, Montgomery County, you know, uh, even up in, in Baltimore, which isn't necessarily the DMV. But, you know, why was the focus just strictly on, on PG County? I, I think that for the network and for, you know, when you talk to people around the country, um, when you say, hey, we have this story of this county in this small state that produces a lot of basketball, that's, that's very quickly interesting to people. But when you start saying, hey, the, um, you know, the D.C. metro area, or, I mean, we can say, you know, D.C. and Baltimore produces a lot of basketball players, then it starts getting lost in the conversation. Um, Chicago produces a lot of basketball players, too. Um, L.A. produces a lot of basketball players, too. New York produces a lot of basketball players, too. Um, the county aspect was really unique about the story. Um, so I think that's part of the reason why Showtime picked it up, that, uh, that a lot of people are interested is because it's just really focused on a county, and that makes it more interesting than just focused on a city. Now, you know, with the focus being on, on PG County, you know, um, how did you guys, you know, come about, you know, having guys such as, like, your Steve Francis, who, you know, is famous for, for being, you know, in Montgomery County, and, you know, how did you guys kind of figure out, you know, who to include and who, who to not include um, when, when mentioning, you know, PG County basketball? We, we let the, uh, let a lot of the interviewees help us out with that. Like, so, you know, Steve Francis's name always kept popping up with the guys. Like he was one of the guys from the area, kind of like a, um, Adrian Danley, who's, who's really like a DC guy, but he went to, he went to DeMatha. There are a few guys that we tried to include, even though they might not be specifically in PG County all the time. These were guys that were real linchpins to PG County basketball. And, um, and Steve Francis was actually, so Tacoma Park, where Steve Francis is from, was split down the middle and used to be from, it used to be Prince George's County on one side and Montgomery County on the other side up until the late 90s when the whole town got transferred over to Montgomery County. So Steve Francis was from PG County, uh, but back in the day, it was Prince George's County. Now uh, that part of Tacoma Park is Montgomery County. Okay, um, so interesting, I think like, I think that you guys definitely did a, a great job at, you know, covering like kind of the cultural aspect of, of basketball, you know, including like, you know, things such as like go-go and mentioning like the musical aspect and a lot of the other things that were going on, um, the war on drugs, the crack era in DC. Um, you know, why, why did you guys decide to include that, that stuff in the documentary um, that may not have really had much to do with like basketball, but, you know, thought that it would that in the documentary? I think it helps the story. Um, you know, we've, you know, we let the the people that we talk to help guide us when we're trying to make sure to include everything. And when you talk to, you know, Kevin Durant, when you talk to Michael Beasley, when you talk to Nolan Smith, when you talk to all these guys that are like the major characters in our story, everybody talked about Go Go. Like, you know, it was we were listening to Go Go, and so. That's also interesting because not a lot of the world knows what GoGo even is. So we felt that found that that was pretty compelling, and also uh, the story of kind of crack and drugs in the D.C. area and P.G. County isn't unique, but it isn't unique for our story because that was part of the reason why AAU really took off because all the outdoor blacktop games kind of got pushed in by people's parents to the indoor courts and to coaches inside. Um, we thought that that was an interesting part of the story. 
Now, there are a lot of people that watched it, you know, and saw, you know, it was, it was only an hour and was like, man, I wish it could have been two hours. I wish it could have been a series. You know, I wish it could have been a lot longer so we could, you know, talk more about the, you know, the, the, the basketball culture here in, here in uh, the DMV area. Why did you guys make it, you know, an hour-long documentary? And, you know, were there any thought process in, you know, making it longer or, or you know, making it a series? So, yes. Uh, I mean, we had 100 interviews. We had lots and lots and lots and lots of footage. Um, but to just to be clear, like, we don't get to, as first-time directors, we don't get to, like, put our foot down and say, this has to be two hours. Yeah. Like that, um, especially for a project like this, there aren't really like network movies about a place. Like yeah. really think about it. Like what basketball movie documentary do you know specifically about a place? So this was actually a new, and I don't want to call it like, like uh, I don't know, revolutionary or whatever. It's nothing that serious, but it's a new, it's a new concept. So, um, you know, so, Showtime took a chance on us uh, and they and they gave us, you know, an amount of time that they thought was a good pr uh, proof of concept for it. So, you know, we wanted it to be longer, too. man. you know, what I mean, we had a lot of more stories that could have made it. We had a lot more people. But, you know, that wasn't in the cards for this one. Um, are there any are there any plans to kind of do a continuation of the documentary or like maybe like a, um, you know, building on this type of thing? Was that anything that was discussed um, within the group? Um, I know that there has been a lot of ideas that are popping up from this documentary. And I know a lot of people have ideas as well. And, I, and I'm happy to see that. At this point, you know, uh, with it being only three days after it come at, came out, with me working on it for so long, um, I'm actually just gonna take a, like two, three more day break from this and then really put on my hat and start thinking if, if you know, the, if, if, if I'm gonna go down that road. Now, I'd be happy if other people do too, but we'll see, I don't know. Um. Now, obviously, there, there were, you know, hundreds of people that you guys had interviewed, you know, for, for, for this documentary. Um, how did you guys kind of go about, you know, narrowing down, you know, who, who to put in and who, who not to put in? Obviously, like, guys like, like a Stu Better, you know, was left out. You know, guys like, you know, Dickie Simpkins, that I don't even know if you guys interviewed, but was a, a three-time champion, you know, with, with, with the Bulls or, you know. There's, there's guys, guys that, you know, um, did a lot of great things for the area that weren't in the documentary. You know, what, what, what went into kind of – you're deciding who, who to put in, whereas, you know, who to leave out? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we interview a lot of people and we tried to interview as many people as possible um, just for consideration to be included in the first part. But, um, you know, as you guys can think, uh, like if we really wanted to do it, it would, we'd probably have to interview like 2000 people. You know what I mean? There's so many hoopers, there's so many important people in the area that from a time aspect, from a budget aspect, it was just impossible to interview everybody. And also some people didn't even want to be interviewed. Some people that we could put in the story is just weren't into it. Um, and then when we finally got down to editing, um, it's not, it wasn't all our decision, the director's decision on who makes the film and who doesn't. It was more a decision based on like who fit into each little story. If you guys watch the documentary, you'll see that it's really a collection of little short stories. You know, you have DC Assault, you have DeMatha, um, you know, you have, E.B. Henderson in D.C. and the migration. You have, you have all these little mini stories. And if you didn't get really make it into those mini stories, you really didn't make it into the movie. Um, and that's part of the uh, unfortunate part of it only being, you know, an hour long movie is that we couldn't get everybody in. We couldn't get all these awesome stories in it's just the way that it was cut. I mean, for the common viewer and for the people who are who are watching this thing and they might not know how the production works or like like you mentioned, how, you know, the the showtime aspect played into who gets into the documentary and things like that. You kind of just break it down for maybe people who might have, you know, some criticism for the documentary. Like, can you just kind of explain that, how this works and kind of just, just so people can kind of understand the process of, you know, how, how these things actually, you know, came to fruition. Yeah, for sure. So, so um, like we acknowledge fully, I acknowledge fully that there's a lot of people that I would have liked to see on the screen. Um, I, you know, I've heard some criticism that it's not long enough, which is great. I've heard some criticism that like you didn't put the public schools in there. And, um, and th that criticism, it's kind of like, I don't know, like what, we can't make a section about Prince George's County basketball public schools because nobody in the country outside of PGDC VA cares about it. So there's a balancing act of like getting this thing made and getting it put out on Showtime with 
making sure we're trying to tell all the stories that the local people would like too. And that was really difficult because as a local guy and as a hooper, I wanted to get all the local stuff in there. But there's the national aspect, like we're putting this out for the world. So we have to touch on the really the top level stories. And I'm not saying that Dickie's not a top level guy because he is, he's a championship winner. But, you know, where does Dickie fit in these short, uh, little short films? He's not a DC Assault guy. He's not a DeMatha guy. He's not with Kevin in that A, PG Jaguars. He's not in the E.B. Henderson. He's, one of, he's in these other short stories that we had a bunch of them. And they just didn't make it into the film. And it's unfortunate. But, you know, we could have made a three-hour long joint and we could have put it right to YouTube. Or we could have cut the one that was an hour long that got to Showtime. And I think that overall, everybody's happy that we got that Showtime stage instead of just another YouTube film. There's nothing wrong with YouTube films, but we wanted this thing to go out there so everybody could see it. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, obviously, hindsight, obviously not now that this documentary has been, has been produced, has been aired, you know, looking back on it, you know, What's your thought process, you know, just reflecting on the documentary and watching it, you know, what, what, what's been going through your head, you know, these, these last few days after seeing the film, you know, air on Showtime? Man, uh, well, I knew that people were going to hate <laughs> or like, that's just, I just, I'm just from here. So I know, so I know it. I mean, people hate on Kevin from here and he's like, spends millions of dollars on the area and is one of the best basketball players that's ever lived. So like, if they're going to hate on him, they're gonna hit on this movie too. So I'm just trying to take a step back, man. I've been I've been in, in, involved in this project since its start. I put my blood, sweat, and tears in it. And now that it's out, I am honestly just trying to take a step back. And uh, with all these interviews, it's very difficult to, and I'm very grateful to, to, to do the interviews, but like, I'm just taking a big exhale. And then maybe next week with open eyes, I'll be able to watch it again and start criticizing it. But at this point, man, I'm just like, I need some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes any sense. For sure. I mean, but, you know, for me and, you know, for, for me and my brother here at All Facts, like, you know, we're, we're DMV guys. You know, we, we grew up here. We went to Springbrook you know, in Montgomery County. And yeah. at the end of the day, you know, outside of all the criticism, outside of what people say, at the end of the day, you know, the fact that DMV basketball was showcased on the network such as, such as Showtime is a huge accomplishment. You know, and I think that um, – I can speak for a lot of people in this area that, you know, we're, 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 we're proud of it, you know, and, and we're happy that, that you guys did take on the project to, you know, showcase DMV basketball to the world, you know, so um, just talk about kind of just the, the, the sense of pride that also comes with it, you know, being able to produce something like this and, you know, have somebody like champions with like Kevin Durant and Quinn Cook and just be able to showcase that to the world. Like you mentioned, you're a DMV guy as well. So like, you know, what does that, you know, mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I was born in D.C., like so many of us were. I was raised in Prince George's County. And when you're from the county, you have to get that Montgomery County bump, too, because there's so many good players there. Um, Northern Virginia, there's a couple areas in Northern Virginia that really go as well. And this is like, um, I love DMV basketball. You know, in, in my mind, Prince George's County is really goes, and it is a really good ball-playing area, but it's all mixed in, man, like – you know, you get Silver Spring right there. You get Southeast D.C. right there. You go across the bridge. North, it's all the same stuff. But the uh, – and I'm super proud of it coming out. And I wish that we could have expanded it more to some of those other stories. Um, but just being from here, I, I, I thought that everybody would want this to be on a network, a major stage. And in order for that to happen, we had to get really narrow with our focus um, and make it as interesting as possible. And, and the county – really made that happen, making it a story specifically about the county. But don't, but, but everybody don't get it twisted. We know the MoCo can, really can go and the DC can really go and Baltimore can really go. And we're really special from this area. And, it, and it's not just the county, it's, it, it's everybody in the DMV that bumps. What, what, is, what is your goal, you know, I guess, what is your, what is your you know, vision that, that this documentary will, will say about the area, you know, um, you know, I guess, what do you want the legacy of, of this film to be, you know, looking back maybe 10 years from now or, you know, even just in the short term, you know, I guess, what do you want this to say about the area um, and what do you want lasting memory of this film to be? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's laid out what, I, what, what we want to say. Like, we, you know, there's a lot of things that we want to say about basketball in the county, but I hope the legacy is that 
you know, maybe there's a filmmaker in Baltimore that gets inspired and is like, I mean, because that's who me and Jimmy are. We're just, we're just local PG County dudes that, that hoop, that make movies, you know, and now we're on Showtime. So, like, if you want to, if, if people want the Montgomery County basketball story, get a filmmaker from Montgomery County and tell them to do it. Same with D.C., same with Baltimore. And, and maybe these kind of things, you'll, maybe you'll see these kind of things pop up. Maybe they'll be the, maybe, maybe they'll be the 90215 L.A documentary about that zip code in LA and all about the Hoopers there or maybe there'll be like the Seattle basketball documentary I don't know but but maybe it'll inspire filmmakers to rep the, their area to make a movie and see what they can do with it you know obviously um well like we've mentioned you know this at the end of the day, you know, this this project did showcase you know very very many different aspects of, of DMV basketball and PG County basketball um so like Obviously, we know like Kevin Durant was and you know, Rich Kleiman were kind of like amongst the producers, obviously with Victor Oladipo and a host of other guys. Um, kind of for for a guy like KD, who's who's obviously from this area, but has kind of reached that pinnacle of basketball. You know, where he's one of the best players, like you mentioned, in the league, but also kind of never lace him up. You know, um, kind of what was that like just working with him um, on this documentary and kind of being able to kind of put your brains together to kind of make this thing um, make this thing come together. I mean, super grateful is, is how I feel. Um, so, so Kevin is super cool. And he had us to his house. Uh, he does summers in L.A. Um, I don't know if it's every summer, but for the past couple he has. And he had us to his house a couple times. Um, and, you know, Quinn did too. And just the sense of community that, like, the community was really behind this when we were talking to all, everybody that we interviewed. But these basketball players that are multimillionaires and have interviews knocking at their door the, uh, all the time to have us in their house and really be a part of this really shows that like there's a real sense of pride from this area. And, um, you know, I know people from Montgomery County do it too. Prince George's County does it too. It's like, where are you from? We're from DC and we just all call it the city. And like, th there's just a sense of pride from people from the city have. And, um, it's it's just great to see. And we were really grateful that everybody that was part of it was, you know, opened their doors, opened their minds, gave us time and allowed us to do it. Now the last question that I have for you, I don't know if there's anything else that Andrew, you know, wanted to ask uh, on top of it. Yeah, just like, if you could say just like, you know, for you, like as a, as a producer, as a guy that makes movies, like, you know, for you, like, well, um, what's, what's next for you? I know you said you want to take a deep breath and kind of take a step back from this, but, you know, um, what's, what's kind of something that, that, that you want to work on, like, in the future? Like, any any goals, any projects that, you know, you might want to take on next? Yeah, I mean, I, I have um, some projects that I'm developing. Um, I, I tend to, I mean, so I'm a, I'm a relative new f filmmaker. I'm, 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 I'm an old head, but, you know, I quit my job a few years back. Well, actually, like, a year and a half ago to really full-time do this basketball one. And then the Basketball County uh, movie is, like, only my first full length and only my second real project that I've wrapped up. So I have to have something ready to go. So I have a couple of projects that I'm developing. Uh, one hopefully is basketball. Another one is about my brother's pizzeria in Baltimore. He's like a world-class pizza maker and he's really close to me and I love pizza. So I'm doing like a little short documentary on pizza and him. And then there's a full length feature that I'm working on a script for. So I've got three little things in the pipeline. That's awesome, well, man. First of all, mm -hmm. thanks a lot for sitting down with us today, man. We, we really appreciate it. We know you guys obviously have a really busy schedule, so thank you for taking time out your day to, to, to talk to us. And best of luck with your future endeavors, man. And on the behalf of the whole DMV community, man, thank you for giving us this, this documentary and allowing us to have a platform to showcase that pride and that talent that we have uh, from this area. Man, it was, uh, it was my pleasure, fellas. Let me know uh, if you ever want to talk again. Um, love to Montgomery County. Baltimore, D.C., Northern Virginia, you know, uh, we <laughs> don't think that we think you guys aren't in the conversation because you guys 100% are. Yeah, man, thanks a lot. And uh, we, we, if you haven't tuned in yet, guys, make sure you go.